Inventor, I've been one as long as I can remember. This is a photo of my first invention that I can remember, a kazoo made with, uh, a speedboat made with a pazoo, kazoo and a balloon. I grew up in Detroit, the home of a lot of inventors, because that was where the automobile industry was when I was growing up in the 70s, 60s and 70s. Uh, but Detroit um, ran into trouble because they tried to extract too much value out of the status quo, and they didn't encourage innovators, which is a bit weird because... They have a real thing for inventors. I went to Edison Elementary School, and Edison's lab was lovingly duplicated by a guy named Henry Ford at his park for inventors called Greenfield Village. Um, also, some other famous guys have their labs and houses there. We wrote book of arts about them. We went there several times a year. We learned about patents in elementary school. We learned that you can't patent an idea. You could only patent a process to make a machine, which was great. That meant we could all be inventors. We could build on each other's work because they built on each other's work. The Constitution says, yes, that's the way it works. So I go through the 70s. Everything great's going on. I discover computers. I have a teletype, and I invent multiplayer gaming. I invent bulletin boards. I invent chat rooms, just like hundreds of other people around the world were doing at the same time. Um, in the 80s, I got professional. I came and I did game development for Lucasfilm Games. Uh, I worked with Chip Morningstar on the first virtual world. Chip is here. Uh, it had the first avatars, the first virtual currency, the first scarce objects, and it got so popular it was, in 1989, moved to Japan by Fujitsu. In the 1990s, everything changed with patents. You could now patent ideas in the forms of something called business processes, and th they decided that software was a business process. This led to the biggest explosion in patents in history. Wouldn't affect me, except Fujitsu wanted to bring Habitat back to the United States. Chip and I were hired to help them bring it back, and for our troubles, what we got was a letter that said they wanted to patent the virtual world in 1997. I already told you it was invented in 1986. Um, so this was a problem. Chip and I discovered something called hostile inventor status. We hired a lawyer. He wrote a letter. We sent a bunch of documentation. I tend to collect things that proved that it existed in the 1980s. We figured this is it. This patent is dead. 2004, I do a vanity search because I'm looking for a job. What do I find? I'm the inventor of the patent, of the virtual world. This is wrong. Patent owners who submit evidence that they invented it a decade earlier um, should be a reason you can't get a patent. Um, uh, but they say, you know, patents are defensive. They're going to protect our companies. But when you are writing patents as an inventor, you feel like you're working in a munitions factory for a war that you don't want to fight, and you don't get any decent remuneration for. Now, uh, Intellectual Ventures is famous for saying, you know, that's why we're winning the software war, because we have patents. Uh, Google's lawyer says, nope, we were doing just fine before 1995. I think I've proven that. But also, in 2011, it was $29 billion to litigate patent software. Now, I've walked the line between uh, filing patents and criticizing the system, but now it's finally backfired. I now have not, re I received a uh, rejection for a gig because I have too many patents in my area of specialty. Yep, that's it. So you have to file patents in order to protect your company, but if you do, it's effectively a future non-compete for your industry. Uh, it's broken. Inventors, we can't put up with it anymore. The companies helping our companies isn't helping us. Yes, I'm pretty mad. It's now mathematically impossible to do software development without infringing patents. It would take two million attorneys to keep up with the patents that are issued every year for every company to make sure they are not infringing. There are only 40,000 patent attorneys. So we have to make some changes. Four things I'm suggesting inventors can do. One, change company policies like Twitter has so that you can't use software patents aggressively and no matter what, the author always has the ability to control whether or not their patents involved in litigation. Two, get the patent office open in the West Coast. We're the number one franchise for one of the few branches of the government that's making money and they put it under sequester. So it's not opening to save money, and of course they're losing money because it's not open. Um, third, uh, support an organization who's interested in inventor rights, and the EFF is one of them. Uh, you don't have to support them. Write a blog post, give an Ignite talk, whatever. Um, uh, you, know, they, they, you don't have to be a member. You can just give them a little money. That would be fine. Uh, and last, a personal call. Be excellent to your other inventors. Pledge never to sign a bogus patent. It's illegal. Your boss can't make you do it. And by the way, it's stupid for him to make you do it because it just costs them more legal money down the road when they go to litigation. So here are the four URLs that, for taking that action. But I want to leave you with one thought. 
I grew up in Detroit. I saw what happened. I don't want to see that happen in Silicon Valley as too many people try to extract value out of the current system and discourage innovation. Thank you very much.